day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Amen. Amen. Hey, everybody. I hope you are out there in that great land of the going live. <laughs> I caught myself trying to do a, uh, do, do the Bible study um, remotely. Uh, it's because of the fact of the coronavirus, it's probably easier to go ahead and, and do, instead of having gatherings, well, you know, you're trying to minimize spreading that uh, the virus. That I, I call myself, want to try to see if I can uh, see if anybody want to dial in uh, to uh, participate. Anyway, uh, somebody dialed in earlier, and I lost them because I wasn't set up. Uh, so hopefully, they try to dial in while I'm talking. I'm not gonna hold up hold up anybody too long. We just want to go ahead and and uh, see what what the word God has for today concerning the Word of God, and uh, just keep our country in prayer because of the coronavirus that's going on. I mean, we, 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 we hear about it, we see it in the news, and uh, we definitely got to make sure that uh, we try to minimize the spreading as far as the communal, uh, the uh, spreading that disease for the coronavirus. coronavirus. Uh, so, anyway, I was going to just try to share some words with you today, and, and then some of it, I will go ahead and try to, hey, there's uh, Rosemary there. How you doing, Rosemary? Uh, just try to uh, keep our country in prayer concerning this disease, and, and uh, hope we can get it under control. Uh, I think a lot, many ministries are doing a live video uh, today. So, uh, with that in mind, I, I plan to do the same thing. Just want to share the Word of God today, and, and, and just see how... To see how God wants to use us. Amen? All right, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come to worship and praise your holy name. Heavenly Father, we lift up our country in prayer. Father, we pray concerning this uh, coronavirus that this pestilence uh, be brought under control. We pray for those who have been affected. We pray for those who don't know they've been affected. Uh, we pray, Heavenly Father, that we be able to bring this spreading of disease under control so it doesn't grow out of control. Uh, we pray for our elderly who seem to be most affected by this. And we also pray, Lord, for uh, young people and, and just all of us in general concerning uh, getting this under control in this country, in this nation, and throughout this world. Uh, we pray for recovery for those that have been affected. We pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit for those whose lives have been lost <clears throat> because of this disease. And we ask Heavenly Father just continue to. Uh, lift our nation, lift our country, lift this world up in prayer. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. I thank you to continue to bless and lead us and guide us in all truth. Amen? Amen. All right. So like I said, that, that's one of the things we definitely need to uh, work on. But what I wanted to do is just let you, uh, the, type, the topic I have for studying, uh, and if you got your Bibles, I pray that you can uh, pull them out so we can go and cover the, the Word of God, because this is a Bible study. And since it is a Bible study, you just want to make sure that uh, we, we, we get in the Word, use that sword, the Word of God, to, to, to grow. Amen? Now, the subject I had today, check this out, uh, is, is dealing with knowing Him means letting no one disqualify you. I see a lot of cases, and, and, and I, I want to talk, I said, fellow sakes, uh, there's a there's quite a few times that we disqualify ourselves, and then there's times where other people disqualify us one another, and and the bottom line is that you, you don't we don't disqualify ourselves. We are born again if we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. That is the gospel that we receive Him as our Savior. Now there's people who don't know they need Savior, and that's okay because we're not talking about a physical deliverance. Uh, even though that does play a role in life, we're talking about a spiritual deliverance. Amen? It's all about the fact is that we, we got to trust and, and understand that without God, there, there's, we're stuck in this situation 
where uh, our spirit has a eternal uh, issue that, that requ requires salvation. And I'm talking about really our, our soul. Now, there's some people don't believe they have a soul. That's up to them. That's, that's, a, that's an option for you to look at. Uh, I believe I have a soul. The Bible said uh, when you go to Genesis, when God... Uh, let me see here. Let me get my camera squared away. It keeps jumping on me. Man, it'll go up a little wide out a little bit. Lost the uh, Melville camera, but we'll bring it back. Hallelujah. All right, give me a break to uh, go live with the Melville camera. Make sure that's squared away. Cause that's that's the only two for going live. But the rest of it we'll go ahead and put on the video later on uh, to share with other people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I lost the uh, video connection for the Melville. We back up again. I hope some of y'all be able to. Uh, Pick me back up. Uh, it should be a notice that's saying I'm back online. I'm, I'm operating in the RV this morning uh, because of the fact is that we, we didn't want to come together as a group. Uh, we didn't want to, uh, as far as the, we're trying to make sure we don't do it in that sharing of the, the coronavirus. So I wanted people, uh, do like the government is saying, especially Georgia, uh, to, to try to stay at home uh, if you can. So you don't spread the disease. Uh, many ministries should be out. I think be up and running today. I just pray that the disease doesn't uh, be shared by anybody out in that community uh, as they worship and fellowship with God. And, and like I said, we know that no weapon form against you should prosper. So uh, ministries, do what you got to do. Fellow saints, do what you got to do. Uh, for us today, we're going to go ahead and basically focus on using uh, technology to do uh, live uh, streaming of, 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 of the gospel that they want to share today. And uh, we also have video conference. Those who have the ability, uh, have the phone number, they can go ahead and dial in uh, to the ministry today. Amen? All right. Now, what like I said, I wanted to talk about is, uh, the subject is knowing him because we've been focused on 2020. Uh, knowing him means, in this particular subject, mean, means letting no one disqualify you. Amen? That one of the things that we have, we have dealt with uh, as far as the body of Christ is concerned, uh, is, and, and as far as just life in general, because I think a lot of cases, uh, when we walk this world, we walk into a very competitive world, and, and, and one of the, is, and being, being so competitive, there are people who have no hesitation to, to go ahead and, and just uh, use the gospel, use ministry, uh, try to use God to, to disqualify people, you know? Hey, Amen. There you go. Uh, hey, Amen. I see somebody made a note comment there for the uh, study, so I'm, I'm glad you participated. Hey, if you got a Bible... I want to start off with uh, Philippians 3.10. That's the one where we say that we may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, suffering may, being made conformable unto his death. And one of the things that I, I really need to understand is that we as the children of God need to know him and the power of his resurrection. See, if we know him, we can know, we can understand his power. And when we can understand his power, uh, we can use that power, amen, to, to, to operate and deal with the challenges of this world, this life, because we're going to have challenges. Uh, we even started, when we started earlier, we started to begin this uh, study uh, this, in January. We had this, this battle between uh, David and Goliath. And, and David was able to defeat Goliath. Using the power of God, there, there was there was not it's not it wasn't optional. Uh, David said, "Man, you know you got you come with swords and spears and 
and shields and and, and and I come with a sling basically because I come in the name of the Lord. In other words, I know I can't in the natural I cannot defeat you. When we come with our different giants that we have, Amen. There's Chris. Let's see if I add Chris there. Hey Chris, good morning. What's going? <laughs> hey man, I'll let you know I, I just got uh, I was on the uh, just came back from New York. Had to pick up my daughter today. No, so good. So you dripping in on Lysol and coronavirus? <laughs> hey, at least this is why I decided to go ahead and uh, do the Bible study this way. <laughs> so, so look, so so I won't be accused of uh, what you call sharing or spreading the virus by going to one of the hot spots to pick up my daughter <laughs> and come back home. Okay. <laughs> And I, hey, not to sound funny, but I hate to say it, I ain't even worried about this. Amen. I mean, yeah, seriously, I'm not. Everybody else going to panic, but it's the flu. If you're going to catch it, it's a little harder flu. If you're going to get it, you'll be okay. If you got, like I said, if your system compromised, you might have a problem. Other than that, I ain't worried about it. Yeah, I know. You know what? By fact, that we are actually past, past Virginia, and that's where my mom lives in Virginia. She's uh, like 83 years old. So, uh, we we decided to 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 this baby said wave at her or something you know not even go over to the location because it's an elderly uh -huh. that can be affected by it so I oh, I yeah. said I said leave them I kind of leave her out of it uh, yesterday and we we got back here man at tell you about four o'clock okay okay <laughs> so I was like hallelujah I can get up <laughs> you know <laughs> what did you tell yeah, her? Hey. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did you dial in this morning? Earlier? I don't know no, that Brother I did, Jackson. I, my first shot. Okay, that may have been Brother Jackson. I, you know, I was on that BP time, so I <laughs> I got it up when I got it up. Uh, hey, so was I. Hey, man. So was I. I. I was tired. Hey, but one of the things I wanted to study, you can see those slides there. Uh, I don't know how big you can see the slides. Can you see them? It's small out there. <laughs> Like you say, if I, if I got two, I, I, can, I can make them big. Uh, I'm looking at them. Amen. It just take me a minute to slide them across and read them, but I got them. Yeah. So, so what so I you want... You can see them look at me sideways of this thing if it's going to tilt. Right. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, and so, so Chris, I was I was sitting there, and I started off early. had Brother Rosemary. He's he's looking at the uh, live stream. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about is, and the title is called Knowing Him means letting no one disqualify you you know and and you know one of the things that the gospel is that people in this world is so competitive people use anything to compete with everybody right and, and, yes, and in this case we know people even use the gospel they use ministry to try to compete with people mm -hmm. so 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 that way they've been using the the condemnation, the guilt trip, guilt trip, you know, uh, to, to try to force people and control people uh, as far as how they see life, try to use a ministry as a means of controlling other people. And that's it run so many yes, people cool. away, right? So, 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 um, re so the reason I use this topic today said letting him means letting no one disqualify you is understand as we walk this walk, man, it's not about disqualifying anybody. It's all about letting everybody know, hey, salvation is for anyone who receives it. You know? Yes, sir. I mean, it's just, that's that's why I wanted to uh, share this topic today. And I ain't going to hold up people too long, but I just wanted to cover that. Meaning, knowing him means letting no one disqualify you. And the scripture we've been using since the beginning of the year is uh, Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Uh, the, the next one is Philippians 1.6, saying, Be in confidence in this very thing. And that's the one we're talking about when we're talking about our children. And look, that's when we're talking about ourselves, is being confident that he has begun a good work in you, will perform it, on today of Jesus Christ. Once again, yes, that's what we talk about. And you know, I, I like using your example. Most cases, growing up, 
<clears throat> where you know how people do the communion thing and they ain't got no problem uh, tell some people to get up and walk out. And yes, sir. I, I, I did had a I had a Bible study on the base last week, and what they was talking about was that I guess one of the visiting ministers was talking where they went to a service, and it sounded like the guy, and because I didn't get what content he was saying, but the, apparently the guy was saying it's okay to get drunk and, and okay to go out and and party. And he was asking for that particular ministry <laughs> to give uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> to, give, <laughs> to give an endorsement of it, and you know, and the brother said he ain't said nothing, right? He he, you know, he do an amen. He said a lot of cases in church, and you got people just get. Can I get an amen? And some people amen don't even know what they amen for. Exactly. <laughs> but in this case, they knew he was trying to get the other preacher to, to get an amen on the. You know the party and this stuff, and I, I think if 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 for those listening to this video, make it hear this recording. I think I think if the person was, if I was there to understand the content of what he was saying, I think you're saying is that even if you went out to the club, went out to the party, hey, went out to the Super Bowl game, went out to do anything that we still will ask you to come fellowship with with other saints you know on Sundays if you could now I don't see that now that is not an issue as far as coming to church you know coming to church to worship you know uh, it should never be an issue because I, I'm trying to find out where was the going to club or or dragon become a uh what you call a a sin uh -huh. do, do you know where that's at no no now we know that the bible talked about don't, don't get drunk right uh -huh. now now we right. i guess we that's that's subjective as to where you're drunk at because some say i'm tipped up with tipsy <laughs> uh -huh. and then some some is like well i i still can walk and talk i still know what i'm saying uh, but the point is that when does that, if with the exception of getting drunk, when did that when did that become a sin? Uh, and then I know a lot of kids, a lot of the words behind that, Chris, is some people are saying is a believer is not trying to find a way to sin; they're trying to find a way out of sin. Right. Right. Well, the that if if that's where the Sin is at being drunk, not in drinking. And you're saying is the reason we don't in endorse drinking is because we don't want the person to get drunk. Then we we might want to use that that analogy on well we don't want people to commit adultery. So, and I guess that's what Islam did. We're gonna we're gonna cover all the ladies up and put yes, a hand scarf on them. Yes, sir. Right, so because, because that, that that won't lead to adultery if we can cover you up, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or or we can tell some ladies, uh, don't wear the don't wear the form fitting clothes or, or look nice and don't put on the makeup because we're trying to find a way mm -hmm. out of sin. <laughs> yes, sir. Instead of into sin, I'm just saying if you if we're gonna put these barriers up. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Matter of fact, look, check this out. Check this out. I don't know if you caught this. There's Jimmy. You showing up, Jimmy? There he is. Hey, what's going on, Pastor? Hey, bro. How you doing? Doing wonderful. How you doing? Hey, we blessed and highly sanctified and favored. We, we're we sitting there uh, Saturday to have the uh, study virtual uh, because of, you know, trying to help in the cause of uh, not spreading that uh, virus, coronavirus. Uh, COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, COVID-19. So so we just doing our part, brother. By, by, hey, just, by just making sure, because I, I tell you, I just came from New York uh, last night. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> or, or actually this morning. Uh, I didn't get in until yeah. about 4 o'clock. 
Can't drive. You need to self quarantine. Hey, okay. <laughs> hey, look, I didn't go what's to. What's going on, my brother? <laughs> hey, what's going on, doctor? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Hey, I got a better story for y'all. What's that? I get a phone call. It's Wednesday or whatever it was, but my daughter, not my daughter, my, my sister was working Chesapeake Arena when they shut it down. She works concessions for uh, um for a charity group. And she was in the in the building when they shut the game down. Whoa. Oh yeah. Now why they shut the game down for that? If not, cause you know the one I remember in Utah they shut it down because somebody tested hot. Utah no, Utah was playing Oklahoma City. Okay, so she was yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was at she working that game. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so, so and you know, I really didn't know what was going on. All I saw was, you know, it canceled the season. Yeah. She calls me, and I'm just joking. I'm going, you got your mask on? Said, no, they finally let us out. I'm like, what? <laughs> I know. And then she wow. <laughs> so then wow. I turned the TV on, and then she started telling me the story. And she knew. Go back. She knew all the names before the news news knew what was going on. She was telling me more about it than the news did. Deep. Deep. That, now that was crazy. Hey, Brother Jackson, you would dial in if you could? I'm getting ready to go to uh, Sandy Valley. Okay. Did you try dialing this morning? No, I did not. Okay, I thought it was you, so I just wanted to catch you real quick. All right, well, um, you have you have a good one. I thought most of the service going to be shut down for the day this week. But, uh, hey, y'all, keep y'all in prayer, all right? Roger, roger that. Take care, bro. Goodbye. Okay, okay, bye-bye. I, I guess, so, So yeah, so that that was Brother Jackson. I was just checking to see if he dialed in or not. Uh, but you're right, that, that virus, man, all those people, they didn't know who was affected, so they decided to just go ahead and just tell people, just leave the building. And, and mm -hmm. obviously, two players have been affected. Uh, apparently some child got infected because he did an autograph for one of them. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, now they said our president is not infected. He was exposed by two people. <laughs> I, I, but I can say something right now, I know. but I'm not. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I can say something right now, but I won't. I know it. I know it because I, I think politically... It would not be feasible or advisable to say if he had it anyway. Because, you know, he, yeah. and I know, and I understand where you're coming from. Most people sit there and say somebody would try to weaponize that. You know what I mean? Politically. Oh, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, but I was concerned on that that last, uh, uh, when it was on TV together. And, and, and somebody, it just seemed to be kind of sniffling a lot. He was breathing kind of heavy. Uh, him and Pence. Did you catch? Did you anybody see the uh, Rose Garden announcement when he made the national emergency? Oh, Chris, you on mute now? Yeah, there you. Go. I can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, like I said, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah, but but yeah, he was. <sighs> Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I said, I oh, don't know, man. You might need to get tested, but they say he tested and and say he don't have it. And and I guess okay. I guess some would say if he did have it, it wouldn't be advisable to say he did. True. So so, but but he was, they say he was tested. This I don't know how this stuff spread as much either, man. I guess it's all on the surface. You know, you shake hands, you sneeze. Oh, when I was up, another problem, because I had to pray over my drinks, my coffee, because I went to get some Starbucks coffee, and you have people sitting there talking, you know, the servants, mm -hmm. and they got gloves on, but they're talking, and they're talking over your, your drink. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm like, I'll give her and say, ma'am, I mean, if you, you pre appreciate what you're doing, and I appreciate y'all talking to the customers, trying to keep things going. But you, you all over, you all over my drink. <laughs> I don't mean no, but I, I just prayed over it. That's the best I could do with it, you know. Uh, but Jimmy, we asked a question. When did uh, 
uh, drink and become a, 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 a sin. You on mute. I don't think it ever has become one. Yeah, I know that, but we get some people. We 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 the topic today is uh, you can see the slides that says, knowing him mean letting no one disqualify you, and one of the things that people have used is, you know, drinking. Uh, when when did going to the club become a sin? You, do you know? I, I I don't think it ever has become one. Exactly. But if, if you hang with some people that you already know saying I don't I don't smoke, don't chew, don't hang with people that do. Of course. Yeah, so yeah. so <laughs> it and uh, I was with my Bible study on uh, the base last week and one of the preachers said that another service he went to, somebody was saying it was okay to drink and uh and, and go to the club and and can I get an amen from he asked that particular minister, can he get an amen? And you know what the, that, that guy did, Chris? He was like, he said, I ain't saying, I ain't gonna say nothing. He, he said, because I ain't gonna say it's okay. He said, yep. that, that's just not okay. That's what he said in the Bible study. So I, I was sitting there and I was, I was like, well, when, when, when we say that's, why we say that you can't do that? And don't we understand a lot of people uh, that come to the body of Christ? They still enjoy themselves with a glass of wine or beer or some of them got that hard liquor. And that's, I know some of y'all like that fire water. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, oh, but, yeah. but some people have a problem with that. You know, and I don't think the I don't think the church should say, hey, I, I guess I can understand the guy says not endorsing it. But but Jimmy, the fact is that to say it is a sin, I think that's that's a, a stretch. But that's that's one of the typical ones they use, is that and 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 I told Chris before you came in, they kind of remind me of Chris. I didn't tell you the scripture I was telling you about was, you know, when Adam told Eve about eating from the fruit of the tree, and when the devil asked her about it, he she had she had a little gravy to it. Chris and said, "Thou shalt not touch it or eat it, lest you die." So in other words, Adam either Adam did or she took that she took that uh, advice and said the best way to not sin at all is just not to touch it. Right. And 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 that's why I think when people sit there and say about drinking or going to the club, uh, it's it's Jimmy they're trying to say this is what I heard a lot of cases in, in uh, some of the churches is said a a, a saint. It's not trying to find a way to sin, but a way out of sin. So therefore, they figure that if you if you do the party, you do the drinking, you you you're finding a way to sin, opposed to find a way out of sin. 